So today, today, the paper the news with Bunny, I hope you are listening to the news as we start with the Rockwater TV. Today we're hosting a resident MP, Honorable Marietta. And like we do always, if you're just tuning in to Rockwater, enjoy the Collins of the Music first, chosen by our, by our, our very own legal Dr. Misha. Hello, hello. Hope you're all tuning in to Rock Radio TV. Today we are hosting our resident MP, Honorable Marita. He's going to tell us about his travels as we enjoy the music before we start officially. Please like the page, press on those stars as many as you can, share the, the broadcast with your friends, with your families, in all the groups that you're a member of. And of course, most importantly, you can support us. Next to the buttons, where you click the like button, there will be the, the fire spot for the for the likes, for the stars. Next to it, there will be the support button, so you can click to support, and it will lead you to another page, so you can join us. The music is absolutely fantastic, and I hope you're enjoying it. Hello, hello. To those who are not aware, our resident MP for Bakweta TV is the UPND Kankoya Constituency MP, Honorable Mabeta, just in case you were wondering which man I'm, re I'm referring to. It's the UPND Kankoya Constituency MP. Now, as we start, uh, let me just introduce everybody on the panel. We have, like I've been saying all along, our resident MP for Kankoya, Honorable Mabete. And we also have my co-host, uh, Val Percy Chama. So before we go on, I'll just like to thank everybody for tuning in. And that's really fantastic that you're watching the show today. Like I said, Click those likes, send all the stars as many as you can. It doesn't matter how many, we can take a thousand, a million, it doesn't matter. Support if you can, and most importantly, share the link, the broadcast to your friends and family, the groups that you're in, even the ones where they didn't want you in, just share them, it doesn't matter. So what my, my honorable is going to tell us is about what's, what he's been up to. He's a busy man. I follow his posts and I'm like, wow. He's everywhere. One minute he's posting from his constituency, he's posting in Osaka, and boom, he's posting outside uh, Zambia in Senegal. So I'll leave this to him so that he can update us on what he's been up to in his very, very extra busy schedule. There you go, Honorable. Oh, good evening, uh, Barbara. Uh, you know, Dr. Barbara. Yeah, Sorry. thank you. <laughs> you can call me Barbara unless you're my patient. I'm not a big person on doctor, doctor. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> hey, what's your name? Hello, Barbara. 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 Hello, Monday, we should have had the show, but uh, we all understand what happened with uh, Facebook. So our um, show was disturbed by that uh, unfortunate event. But yeah, however, but that part. yeah. However, that doesn't stop us from continuing engaging with uh, the Favaqueto family. I think we are growing every day. 
I'm so excited. I was just getting to an update to Syria now on the satellite. Meaning, starting from uh, next week, we will now go via is it ABC? Yeah, we're moving up. We're moving the places. are moving up in the world. <laughs> yeah, that's a great progress. I think something we should be excited all of us to see that our show is now growing bigger. So yeah. we have to to thank first um, the, the 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 founder. I think the people behind this TV, I mean this show, and the the Zambians, and not only the Zambians. Believe you me, Barbara, at the time I was traveling from uh, Senegal, I was at the airport in Addis. So yes. I met I met a, I met a woman, uh, the, um, the woman by the name of um, Dr. Shama Pande. Yes. She, she's a Zambian, but she she wasn't too sure whether I was the person she was uh, seeing, at, I mean, looking at. So, you know, she had to do the password. She, she just said, honorable. <laughs> and these days I'm getting used when I when I ever hear someone and uh, um, uh, she shouts such a title, I get attention. So she could say, "Ah, I knew it was you. I've seen all my yeah. too. I'm from Canada, going back to Zambia. So we had the chat, the chat together. We shared a lot of things. So this just shows to say the the the, the people listening to this program are not just from Zambia, but across the globe." Which is something we should yeah, uh, uh, some are very important artists that we have written. So it is exciting to see the direction, to see that we are to as them now we well, want to. Are you able to hear me properly? Your line is like fading off a bit. I think his line is not good. Yes, I can get you. No, his line is not good. I think his line was frozen. So, uh, Percy, you were mentioning on top of uh, talking about uh, Mobetes, we'll add on some fantastic news about the malaria vaccine. So, we may talk about it towards the end of the program. What do you think? Is there anything else you want us to, to share? Oh, he's back. He's back. He's back. Uh, okay, uh, carry on. Carry on. Carry on. Oh, he's okay. gone again. <laughs> okay, well, okay, when he comes. No, it's, it's just that. Um, I was impressed because even Malawi was involved in the uh, research when they were doing yeah, the thing. Yeah. Things. So, so, yeah, for me, being Malawi, it was involved. So you, we've got proper data. It's not like uh, it's a data you're getting from Egypt. So far, you yeah. Think, yeah, you might be thinking the food and things are different. Oh, uh, 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 you can carry on, honorable. Just on with uh, from where you left. It's like the network is very but so yeah it keeps freezing it's uh, it's freezing on you yeah so as you're saying about uh uh Percy yeah the no, research on malaria is really good let's see if it works now for him is, is your mic good, Honorable, now? Yeah, I'm, I'm about to get you to the point of losing you also. Um, your network is sort of lagging, but uh, we can hear you. Maybe you can remove the camera for now and just speak if that will make it uh, a little bit better for you. Like this? Yeah, that's much better. That's much better. It's now clearer. Yeah, but to get now. Yeah, yeah, we can hear you well. Okay. So you were saying what have you been up to? So you you, you said that you'd meet, you'd met uh, the doctor from Canada. They recognized you, and you just heard the password honorable, and you realized that yeah, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, what I was saying is, uh, TV Wakwetu is uh, an international TV. 
we have uh, so many people following us. So what you've been doing, what you've been working on is something Zambians across the globe are appreciating. Yes. So it's a platform I think we should uh, utilize to communicate and engage Zambians who have so much interest both home and those who are outside home to know what is happening here. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so I was just recommending you for the job well done and don't relent because we're in a global village so people want to have real-time information as it happens, I want to understand. They're so concerned of what is happening back home. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Absolutely. Yeah, sure. How has been your week? I was also seeing you, you know, you're good at going jogging, you put out the pictures. So, between the jogging and your work, tell us what you've been up to. <laughs> yeah, I think it's been an engaging week. You know, I just came back from Senegal where we went through a serious workshop on building our capacity as members of parliament yeah. to not only not only to make laws on um, illicit financial transactions but to ensure that we also provide an oversight and just ensure that we protect the assets or I can say the properties of the citizens in our country yeah. so that workshop uh, enlightened us the, the, the participants on how other countries have made serious headways in combating um, corruption, uh, anti money laundering, um, financial white collar crimes, which have uh, been a challenge to so many countries. So I think it's something which, something which we are looking forward to see how we're going to implement and just continue protecting the Zambian citizens from fraud. Okay. Yeah. If you don't mind me asking, you know, when you have a workshop, you do the, the these uh, workshops that you do, who arranges them and how do you now come back? Do you like report to somebody when you come back that this is a workshop that you, we, you did? I know government is very different, like in other, in other jobs, like in our jobs, if you do a workshop, it goes to your CV or goes to what you've done. In your, as ministers or as uh, MPs, how does that add up? Where, where, where does it help you? With? Do you have like a list of uh, what you're going to implement and make a tick box that I've done this, I've done this? Well, how does it work? I just wanted to find out. Because the, the workshops are all the time. People travel all the time. So I just want to know how you now implement it. Yeah, and there are in two forms. There are those workshops which are basically... Uh, done by parliament for the purpose of building capacity in members of parliament, yeah. and there's those workshops which are, which are done by interested groups, maybe NGOs or pressure groups, they just want to have a link between parliament and the, 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 the objective. So the, the workshop we went to was uh, sponsored by an NGO, which is uh, basically there for good governance. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, yeah. So that they will continue engaging us. We are, we are we're going to, we're likely to have a workshop where now we're going to bring down what we learned to the Zambian, you know, the Zambian um, uh, level where we invite anti corruption commission, DEC, big government institutions, the letter in charge of collecting of money on behalf of the government so that we can engage them and just share yeah, good practice on what we can do. So that's part of skill transfer, so that those agencies can also be updated on what other country. And we're yeah. really having some other participants from countries where they've scored good marks on the corruption and the illicit financial transactions, or who are coming to participate and to present their case and just maybe or pass the skill to our local. So we went there as parliamentarians. When we're coming back to Zambia, we continue implementing what we, we learned. So from, from that workshop, I think I've managed to, to, to understand and know that uh, as a member of parliament, I've got the right to, to provide oversight over um, public finance so much that now I'm making a serious follow-up on the, the Mufurila Mukambo Road, uh, where it is suspicious. Are you able to me? Uh, all right, 
Ah, es gibt die Hatzon. Hatzon, yes. Oh, okay, sorry, I'm sorry. I'm just going to get to the Yeah, so because of that, I'm now making a follow-up on the the Mufrila, the Ndola Mufrila Road. Mufrila Mukambo Road is the road which has been a problem for the people of Mufrila for over 10 years now. The contractors have been coming and going out of sight. They come, they go out of sight. So I've done some letters because of the workshop I did. I'm working now to to write on behalf of the community so that I can get the statement and understand how much money has been put to the project. You know? I didn't know that uh, that's uh, responsibility before I was trained to say I can, as, uh, as a role on my role of one oversight, I can push on behalf of the public to understand transactions which we think they're not benefiting the community. So that's the benefit of that. So I'm going to, tomorrow I'm going to National Red Fund RDA to deliver um, the letters which they have to respond and give us a printout of the statement of how much money has been pushed and why the roads haven't been done for 11 years. Mm. From there, we don't know what comes uh, next because we can't speculate at the moment. So that was the benefit of such a workshop. Sorry, Barbara, uh, if uh, kindly, uh, Pesi could help you with the sound, uh, with the sound system. I think the you have to fix the mic. Uh, then I'll, I'll take over as you fix it, and then you can come and take over because there's uh, there's some echo from the background. Mm -hmm. Oh, is it my echo? Is it for me? I think so, yes. Uh, yes there's I some kind of noise. Let me put myself off. Okay, I'll put the mic and come around. Okay, let's see. Let me put myself off. 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 Let you can kindly yeah, continue. Sorry that I dis I, I interrupted. It's just that the mic was uh, very noisy. Yeah, no, it's all right. I think we have challenges uh, of you know, a network everywhere. So when we get notice, we need to work on them. I hope yeah. I'm clear now. Am I yeah, strong? very I'm much. Able to get you, okay, loud and good. clear. Good. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you. So uh, I think the Senegal of some detail, the Senegal trip, we can continue updating you on what you're trying to do to ensure that there is accountability and transparency in how public finance, especially to do with the people of Mufrila, were managed on behalf of the people of Mufrila. That will be updated later. Yeah, then uh, Sunday, I had an opportunity to, to go to church. I was invited by the UCZ. This was one of the churches I've been there for a long time. One thing I noticed in that church was the mood of the people. They were, they were so much in the high spirit. You know, I've been to churches for a long time because of having been campaigning for a long period of time. I could just feel a difference when we went back to that church. I could just feel the difference when we went back to that church, how the mood of the people, everybody had so much energy, there was happiness. There was the spirit of freedom you know, on their shoulders, even in church. So it gave me a feeling to say Zambians, I think, for a long time were not breathing. So now we're breathing, you know. But the, so, the Honorable Mavet, Honorable we, we, Mavet, sorry. Yeah. Just continue. Just continue, please. Thank you. Oh, yeah. So that reminded me to say there's a lot of hope and expectation from the people of Zambia because they feel they... They are part of what we are. So when I was given an opportunity to give um, a speech to thank the people for for the, the work they did, I could hear a lot of you know, running comments. This is what we wanted. There, there was so much pride in the people of the achievements we are making at Zambia. This is just a sign to say we shouldn't take people for granted. They are happy with what, what, what they have done on their part. Is, uh, the remaining part is for us to deliver the expectation which they invested in us. So the, the church service, I think, was something which really highlighted to me how much the Zambian people are happy and ex expectant of what we're going to do to them. So this pushed me now to go to meet Mupani. 
Mupani, the Mupani CEO, because Mupani remains the major, I mean, the, the biggest company we have in Mufrira. So we have to engage them to understand a lot of things among them, being their corporate and social responsibility, as well as the famous Black Mountain. So when engaged the CEO, he broke it, uh, and he made it very clear to say, um, he believes in saying things that they are, so that you don't keep on talking about them. So on the Black Mountain, it was shocking. Glad is to learn to say. Uh, my, my, my honorable, before you go on the Black yeah. Mountain, I've got something yeah. I wanted to, 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 to ask you on that. Um, yeah. did, you, did you hear the, 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 the speech by the uh, Minister of Mines today? Was it today, if I'm correct? Okay, no, it was today. Yeah, it, yeah, was, it was today. today. Yeah. yeah. Well, it was interesting, and I, I also listened to some of the questions. And, and I, 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 if I recall very well, there was a bit he said uh, there are some contracts which were given to big companies who've taken over the place you have just mentioned. Am I correct to say that? Yeah. They, yeah, so exactly. they, they would like, they want those to, they, they are looking at those, those kinds of. Uh, contracts in order for for those contracts to be to be given to youths as a small scale uh, uh companies or mining companies yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah yeah so in your constituency you've got that type of thing yeah how is it going to be the way it is because right now the way you've got your the the, 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 the it's difficult to differentiate because some you, 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 the current government wants to treat everyone equal in terms of it doesn't matter which political party you're coming from. But again, when yeah. you come on the ground now on the real thing, yeah, you've got those youths who are PF and you've got youths who are in UPND. And then you find, you find that the UPND wants, no, because you guys were doing, so it's us now. So how are you going to deal with those kind of, that kind of environment? Because at the end of the day, if, if what the, 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 the Minister of Mines said goes through, you have a big job to, 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 to look fair when you are uh, uh, giving away things in terms of that. So how do you see it? Yeah, but um, I think um, uh, a police, I mean, you cannot form government without a political party. That's something we should all understand. A government is formed by a political party. So we cannot separate a political party from the government. And the political party is made up of grassroots. And the youths are the major component of uh, the, 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 the grassroots, OK? So in as much as we would want to balance and ensure that it's equity for everyone, we should not forget that there are some youths who are disadvantaged because they were UPND. They were disadvantaged by, 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 the, by the previous government for them being UPND just because they were UPND, their life was almost shut down. So even as much as we want to be fair and equity, but there's always, always a point at which Umufiashi has to strike a balance on a responsible, irresponsible, trustworthy, and a child they can't trust. So I think treatment, there's a point there's a point at which you have to separate with who. We would want everyone to benefit, which is correct, but you can't forget where we are coming from and how um, the, 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 the people who have sacrificed so much to be where we are. Otherwise, you'll be betraying those people for having sacrificed for us to be where we are. The treatment to be fair, but it's, it has to be, I mean, to be equal, but fair. We are, we're going to be fair to everyone. Fairness means you... you, you you, you give Jane or Jane what they deserve according to the input and the result which you have. But, but in, uh, Honorable, sorry, uh, but mm. what will differentiate you if you are saying that uh, even though we have uh, uh, in the home that you can have a fam you can have children and you have your favorite, but you also mm. have to look at uh, equity. And how yeah. are you going to differentiate yourself from the previous regime despite that you you have to prioritize yeah yeah, yeah, other yeah, one. Number one. yeah yeah number one um we we'll allow everyone to have a share okay 
in the previous government, if you are UPND, you can never go anywhere where there was anything to benefit. We allow everyone to, to, to have a share, right? But we we'll give an extra incentive to those who've been, who made it possible for us to, to be able to share the cake. We we'll give an extra incentive. We we'll give a priority. Where there's need to give priority, priority should be given to the people who sacrificed. We cannot dump them and throw them, like throwing water with a baby because we want to bring something new. No, those are our youths. They sacrificed, they gave up their future. Some couldn't even go to school. Others lost their jobs. Others lost their families. Because their families were someone, because the UPND, the family started putting a line and they couldn't involve them in the family program. So we have to be fair by ensuring that food soldiers are treated fairly by rewarding them more than those who didn't um, put in to be where we are today. That's just the, my opinion, and that's what I think is fair to everyone. And what, 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 uh, what scale are you going to use? What strategy are you going to use for you to see that we're giving more of this? On what scale are you looking at? Yeah, the, the, the basically the scale we're going to use is we, we have to look at the, the number one, when it comes to priority, uh, who gets what when and how do they get it? If we sell of 30% of the Black Mountain, we're likely to make one million kwacha. We have to apportion to say, for those people who, the UPND, real UPND soldiers who sacrifice, how much should they get from this one million kwacha available? For those, uh, those who are not in politics, obviously we treat them as uh, uh, Zambians fairly. Then those peer friends who we knew to say these are really peer and made our lives so difficult. We know them, you know, we know them. They are part of the regime which brutalized and that what. We give them a share, a small amount for them not to go hungry completely. This is the rule of the game. Yeah, but don't you think it will bring some uh, some alarming situation whereby not you are not equalizing because as the president said, uh, from his previous speech, that he wants to bring equity, whereby he should not segregate that this is from the UPND and this is from PF or whichever party it is. Don't you think that will bring some kind of uh, uh, conflicts? There's no equity without being fair but firm. Okay, you have to be fair but firm on the, doing the right thing. Even when we're trying to apply equity, we need to be firm on being fair. So it's not just equity which is going to disadvantage those who need to be treated fairly. So you're going to be firm on treating people the way they deserve to be treated. It's part of the game. We cannot completely delete. So even if you go to America, look at Joe Biden's cabinet his appointment. He has rewarded most of the Democrats. You know, we can't run away from that. That's how democracy works. It's fair, but you have to be firm. You're not inventing the wheel or doing something new in Zambia which is beyond what the, the founders of democracy have done before. So just fair that the UPNG's foot soldiers who have lost their 23 years, 10 years, 5 years for supporting UPNG should get the benefit of having made that decision to take a risk to support the UPND. Five years ago, four years ago, three years ago, it was so difficult for someone even to claim to be UPND on the copper belt. UPND was a non-go area. But the few people stood up. Very few could come out and say, I'm your PND, you know? So we need to reward them for some, having taken such a, a bad decision which others couldn't take. We shall not dance to the tune of those who betrayed us and want to come back and cry in the name of being uh, fair and we don't want to take advantage of us not being firm in promoting fairness. Fairness should become with being firm on what the things we do. Okay, uh, uh, Honorable, I know we'll visit that back again. Yeah. Uh, 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 what, what I would like to ask you, what, what, what are your plans for the coming week? Yeah, I think um, if you've seen this week, you've done so much on the I mean, speed of statements. Ministers are now giving us policy directions. We are now starting to see what, what direction the government is taking. Like yesterday, we had... Um, uh, the finance minister giving us um, a set of updates on the economy, which is very important. From that, I can summarize to say our friends, the, the, the PF, are busy trying manufacturing lies. 
to dance and European making European D look like it's the government of lies like they were. Number one, they kept on talking about they have they have brought in a lot of figures on the on the debts, the debt position is under. The president spoke about the debt, the total debt being more than the 15, 14.9, I can say 15 billion dollars, which has been declared by the PF government. The, 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 what the minister gave us yes, I mean, the, the other day, just yesterday, was the external debt. The external debt is in two components. Okay, I want to follow me so that you understand where the PF are taking advantage of uh, misinforming the nation and say HH is a liar, he lied to the Zambian people about the debt. The external debt is in two components. There's a debt which the government borrowed for its personal use as a government. Then there was a debt which companies within Zambia borrowed by the government assured the lenders to say that they will be the security in the law. So that's what become part of the government debt in case of the default. So that's what's making the 14. Then we have the government owing Zambians, local suppliers, local institutions, local organizations, uh, uh, you know, individuals who have done business with the government, but they haven't paid them. That becomes a local debt. It's local. Everything is done within. So when you add the local debt and the international debt, it gives you the grand total of the total debt the country is, the Zambian government is owing. So now our friends in the PF, because the minister only spoke about the two components of the external debt, they are projecting a, a perception to say the president misled the Zambian people by declaring an amount which was more than what the minister said. So the minister is coming back maybe tomorrow, Friday, to give us a better understanding of the real debt around it. And remember, Zambia was getting some debt with a non-disclosure clause. You know, on the behalf of Zambian government, on the behalf of the Zambian people, who are going to pay uh, the, the debt through their tax, the government goes and borrows a loan which has got a non-disclosure clause. You still can't disclose to the public that this money has been borrowed. So those are the questions we're going to ask the minister when he comes back to tell us if how much magnitude of those non-disclosure debts. Okay, you can tell us the amount that state where the money came from. Because we want to know how much as Zambians are owing, they were owing whoever owing both locally and internationally. So this is the part which the PF are trying to manipulate and confuse the Zambians because they are bent on believing to say they are going to come back to power by manipulating them. The minds of the Zambians, but the truth always prevails. In just a matter of time, people gonna get to know the truth. The next, I think, the Minister of uh, Local Government, who also spoke about the CDF, the Community Development Fund, which has been the 2021 Community Development Fund, which was the first time in the history of Zambia where a new government pays or is able to meet its obligation of the community development funds in all the 156 constituencies before the, the, the budget is made. Usually what would happen is to say, we're not going to manage to pay CDF for 2020 because our coffers are dry or we don't have money. But this government has made it sure that the, the, before the European introduces its budget, which is likely to have a different amount on the CDF, because the president spoke so much of putting money back to the community, so the amount may be more. Well, we have made the obligation of being the, 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 the CTA. Again, in the past, you would find that the selective application or displacement of funds, constituencies which are regarded as UPND, were hardly given CTA funds. You know? so they went so much on, uh, on the PF side, but this time all the constituencies have been paid, and we'd be shocked to say when there was a shortfall. The European government decided to leave out Monze, uh, leave out Samazabuka and Luena constituencies where there are UPND, uh, UPND seats, not to give them CDF because there was a shortfall, but quickly money was found and all the constituencies have been paid. So that's progress which we should all be proud of. There is no selective application of the CDF. Yes, I'm going to get equal access to the funds available, regardless of where you are. Minister of um, um, Agriculture, he also gave his position on the main situation because we are facing this challenge where we have uh, enough maize on the in the country, but we don't have 
enough storage capacity to to mix on, and store that on, on the maze on honorable um, yeah. okay uh you you correct me because i uh, i just get drip drip information so because i want to since you mentioned the maze i want you to comment on that as well uh sure i know according to the information i've read that only the maze which is in depots will be bought am i right to say that only the maze which has already been delivered in, depot. in the depots will be paid for and yes. those who are still on the farms are they is there anything because th those are losses as well so anyway continue because yes. i want to just to make sure that you on your explanation you add that bit as well yeah sure uh, uh, sorry uh okay. honorable, Mabe honorable Mabeto, sorry i would like also to just ask before you move on to the next uh update uh concerning the cdf uh, community development fund I would just like to to find out in your in your in your community what is your priority? What are you going to work on after if you, you receive this kind of funding? What do you what do you, what do you intend to focus on first? Yeah, the, the first focus is to appoint a CDF committee, of which the town clerk has been talking to me, taught me to appoint so the the, the, the committee. I mean the the members of the the committee who are going to manage these funds on behalf of the community so this this is cdl funds i'm just part of the co committee meaning i'm not final so the community will make proposals and will sit as a committee to analyze and look at what could be priority so it's not about me it's about the community these are community funds so we have to follow and put i mean respect the input of those representing the community i mean the co community in the community in making the final decision so not about me it's about the community. That's why it's called Community Development Fund. So we have to work closely with the community to ensure that we reach... We, the community makes a decision on what is priority to them. Obviously, I understand you. What I understand yeah. what you mean, Honorable. But what I mean yeah. is uh, you probably have some meetings to say, okay, if we receive some funding from the government as a community, because you are part of the community, this is what we intend to use the funding with, with or without the funds. There is always a plan to say this is, it, we need this project to be executed. So that's why I wanted to know, do you have an available uh, project which you want to prioritize when you receive those kind of funding as a community? Um, you know, it's a committee of 10 people. I cannot give a position alone, meaning I'll be dragging those people to support what I'm saying. So for me, I want the, com the committee to be the, the final judge, the final to make a decision. It's not about me, it's about the community. The committee is appointed, appointing on Friday. So after we're going to see the committee, we're going to make a decision on what we think as the committee is the priority. I don't want this to be about me. It should be about us. At the end of the day, we need to work together and feel together. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Uh, Barbara, you, yeah, would you yeah. like to chip in? Do you have any comment for... Barbara, over to you, please. Thank you. I've just unmuted that. I'd just like to apologize to everybody that was listening. I, I didn't realize that my head headset was not cancelled off the phone, so there was like a low volume. Uh, yeah. First of all, I'd like to go back to what you were saying about remembering the, the youth that fought for, you know, the, the seat for UPND. I totally agree with you. They should be looked up first. I know there's fairness that everybody should, uh, you know, give, get a fair chance, but the first priority should always be the people that you worked with. Actually, it's even biblical. You know, when David was fighting the, uh, the enemy, in this case it was his son, uh, Absalom, when they won the case, somebody tried to join them, and then David said, you, you only joined us yesterday. Yeah. So you couldn't go with David and them, and this is biblical. So, um, in regards to the committee, then you said that you've got nine members. Who chooses the nine members of the committee? I'm, I'm I'm given to appoint uh, is it six? Then the other four are nominated by uh, the, the, the the among councillors. Is the procedure? 
which which the players who nominate go. So, but as a member of parliament, I, I, I will nominate one person from the church, two people from the community, one person from uh, the NGO. Um, um, the, the chiefs also have a voice or a representative. So we 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 have got different uh, limits on who we influence, but but also the I mean one council also one councillor from among the about nine councillors. If the councillors among the nine councillors will be able to vote, what they think the two councillors can also represent the director of finance. I mean director from the council, six council. That's that's the arrangement. I just want to, to apologize to our viewers. Um, there is a typo er error on um, uh, the Honorable's uh, uh, writing. I haven't seen it. I've asked somebody to send me a, a, a screenshot. So I would like to apologize for that. So because they, they've been, it, it became a topic on its own. <laughs> so that's why I have to apologize to our viewers about that. Next time we'll try to correct things quicker than than usual. All right. Um, uh, go ahead, ask a question, Gladys. Uh, yes, uh, Honorable, we have a question, uh, uh, or rather a comment from Emmanuel Chomba, uh, one of okay. the viewers. It says, uh, debate on 20% 20 uh, uh, 20 bet winning, it's unfair. Why can't the government put those sanctions on betting company instead of poor and unemployed, uh, unemployed youth? Could you kindly comment on that? Oh, actually, before before yeah. before you come, let, let me add something on top of that. I've been itching to find somebody to to ask. So since <laughs> somebody has asked down there, I wanted to you know you you have to bear in mind that uh, alcohol betting they all have one thing in con in common. They are all addictive. And the only thing I've heard in this conversation of this same 20% and whatever, it's just 20, money going to spend other things. I haven't heard anything to do with looking after, because, you know, it's a big problem, but, you know, it's like uh, AIDS when it's, it came to Zambia in the early years. People were hiding. That's how the uh, uh, gambling addictive is at the moment. So what, what do you say, if you can manage to, to fuse in the, the way the question has been asked by my colleague and the way I've added that, I hope you can fuse them together and hope we'll get a nice answer. Yeah, on the, the law on betting was a law which was a special instrument which was passed by the Minister of Finance, Mr. Dr. Nandu, and approved by the PF administration. So these are the lies I'm trying to say. The PF keeps on running away from the responsibility and want to push it on the UPND. So that law on betting was passed by the Minister of Finance last year in September, and it was only implemented this time, well, which they should have done some time back because it was a statutory instrument, it's law. We in the, as European government, passed any law in terms of policies. I was just saying the minister, that's when I just started talking to give us the policy direction. So we haven't approved any statutory, we haven't voted for any bill. No bill has been passed apart from approval of change of ministry. So this was a PF law. So if the Zambians don't want it, the Minister of Finance will be presenting a budget in the next uh, two weeks. Because of the make the submissions. The minister is still receiving submissions on things they should consider should be in the budget. So let them submit to the minister and give reasons why such an income should not be taxed. Because as a government, we pay tax. Everybody pays tax, especially that in a highly... Uh, and tax informal sector in Zambia. You know, the informal sector is uh, poorly taxed. Compliance levels are very low. You'll be shocked, uh, glad this, to know that even the money we take out of, I mean, we, we, we pay school fees at private schools, the money we pay in private hospitals, you know, we, we most of the people who earn so much, they spend so much money in private uh, in schools than government institutions. That money is it just goes without tax uh, coming back to the government. So those who, are, who want to justify to say betting should be taxed, they should give reasons which should make economic Betting is not a UPND 
bill or say the, uh, I mean, uh, UPND policy, it was implemented by the PF, but they couldn't implement it because they, for them, everything was just about winning the election. So after the election were gone, there was a law which wasn't being implemented. It's a rule of law, it's a government of, of law, so to implement the law according to what is, was on the table. Otherwise, it could have been cited for breaking the law. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Honorable. Um, yeah. Unless if, uh, uh, Bar uh, Barbara, do you have any question uh, or Pacey before I, I, I ask any question? Kindly, if you do, just go ahead. Oh, let's press it on. This is, uh, I'm not good at what the, you know, the, the gambling, my views on gambling are a bit extreme. So maybe I may not discuss it because uh, Zambia is a Christian nation. Everybody proclaims to be Christian. So if anything, we should have tougher rules in terms of gambling. But that's the different opinion to the people on the ground because I'm finding it shocking that some people are actually thinking that gambling is the source of income for young people. I think one of the politicians, I'm not mentioning any names anymore because they may feel so important that we're mentioning them. One of the opposition leaders actually said that you're affecting the, the youth. I think that's, that's a bit like saying, let's uh, reduce the cost of weed or any other drug because it's making the young people happy. Weed, gambling are all in the same boat. They're addictive uh, uh, habits that are dangerous to our young people. How do you feel vulnerable about gambling as in itself? I do understand that the tax itself was not even done by UPND, but the way people are coming out to discuss gambling is a bit worrying. As a parent myself, and for the other parents within Zambia, I think it's something that they should worry about, that a young person can have little money that they've had the end working and then take it to gambling. It's a bit worrying for me because gambling is gambling. You cannot, you cannot make it nice. It is gambling and it's addictive. It's just as bad as any other drug. What do you think? Yeah, um, uh, we are in a democracy where people choose what to do. So in a democratic dispensation, for sure, individuals have the right to choose. Well, that's the price of democracy, you know? The problem with democracy is the freedom ends where not end. Even as, in my faith, in my family setup, my parents never allowed us to gamble. It was a serious crime to, to, to be involved in any form of gambling, whether playing cards or what. So I've been brought up in a family where gambling I've never tried to bet and it's something I'll never do because that's how I've been brought up. But that doesn't give me the right to condemn someone who think it's right in their own uh, uh, conscience. So in democracy, that's how bad it is because in democracy, you have to respect the rights and the liberties of other people. It's not everything I'm going to agree to as UPND, but when it comes to liberties, you have to, you know, you, you, you have to respect other people's liberties. So for those, I'm sure for those who, who, are, who are so much in the betting, I hope even them, when they, there'll be a minority group which is going to be under pressure to, 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 to on, on other people's opinion because then they can't do what they do, they'll be able to support them because that will be the thing for them to prove what they stand for. Unfortunately, in democracy, when they're in a minority group, you may find popular, but that's your right. That's the price of democracy. It, may, it, it gives other people the right to do what they think is ideal and okay for them. But morally, in the moment, they have been brought up. So that is immoral, no? But they have been brought up in my family. In, even if I can't allow my children to start gambling, because I know the danger. They start stealing things from, from, from one person, they try to cross over to go and justify the addiction, as we have said. But others can manage it. Maybe they can manage the addiction. It makes economical sense. They're able to work within. So we, they have the right to, 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 to do what they think is okay as long as they're not infringing on anyone's right. All right. Thank you for that. Anything you have to say about Percy or uh, Gladys? 
Um, yes, I would like to inform the viewers that kindly send us the stars uh, or uh, you viewers on Facebook and uh, those on YouTube kindly press on the like button for this uh, platform to grow. Um, and then I have a question for, for Honorable Mabeta. Um, yeah. Honorable Mabeta, you walked us through your trip uh, combating the, the, the corruption. And uh, I would like to find out what is the way forward uh, since we already, I still think that we still have uh, the people in uh, DEC and ACC and you say that you are trying to bring up uh, transparency. So how do you intend to bring up this transparency? Do you have a strategy like a portal where the people can go to and look at, for example, the procurement, how much has been bought for what, and what expenses have been put in, uh, if, if I look at transparency in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, finances, that's, that's, that's my question is related to. Do you have any kind of uh, strategy? Yeah, Gladys, I, I think I said tomorrow I'm walking into Rhodes, uh, National Roads Fund and um, RDA to request for a statement on how much they've spent money on the Ndola Mufria Road and the Mufria Mkambo Road because I've seen a contract on site and out of site. It's just the request on the on the statements. I'm not accusing them of anything. All I want is to establish facts. I think that's the direction Zamdan should, uh, we should take. It is our rights as citizens, because this is a problem where we think things are not done right. We can request right to the institution, or maybe engage the member of parliament so that we can tackle the issue on their behalf in parliament. We question the means and side of those institutions so that you have the access to the information looking. What we're not going to do, number one, uh, Gladys, is to, to work on assumptions, you know, to want to satisfy our assumptions. Because I have got a prejudice about someone because that person was associated with PF, so they are also corrupt or there's anything, and want to judge them without establishing facts. Number two, we're not going to to, to, to hear people from the position just because they were the perceived to be PF. They are Zambians. They also have to get the jobs which they are currently doing. Their family people have got all commitments which benefits their jobs. So without facts, without you know, uh, without any to prove to say this person, if, if this person is guilty of this, we're not going to be uh, judging people based on our assumptions. We need facts, which is very important. And those facts, I'm sure we are the people who are. There, Right to them uh, uh, next to the permanent secretary. Uh, sorry, Honorable. I, I, I just wanted to clarify. I, I was looking for the system. Do you intend to put up system not for not for, for, for institutions, different institutions to go or the public to go and ask uh, what has been purchased, like a system or a portal where the public where it will be open for public to just go online and look it up and see what has been purchased, what expenses are there. Not, not, not as a request, just a, a public, uh, a public um, uh, portal. Uh, We, we seem we seem we seem to we seem to have a, a bad network. Can you can you hear me, Honorable? Uh, I can get you now. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Did you did you get my question? No. Would you mind? Can you can you get me now? Yes, yes, so, I can you. Okay. I I was saying that I just wanted I was just clarifying to say that do we are you intending to put up a system which will be available for the public where the public can go onto a portal online 
where they can see the expenses which has been made by different institutions. Thank you. Wow, that's like a brilliant idea, but so far it has been done. Uh, is uh, the revision of, uh, can say, the review of the public procurement process, and there's a statutory instrument which has been issued so the same. Even the presidential spokesman today at the press conference where he emphasized on the three uh, the government to be looking at the price, uh, right, uh, it is right, the quantity, and the delivery. I think it's I think also the Institute of Purchasing and Supply also made so there are some engagements, you know, so stakeholders are coming on board. So if they are going to, that's a good suggestion, which maybe we can ponder and see how, 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 how feasible it is, because here in Zambia, you know, a few government institutions even have computers in their offices throughout the country. So we have to look at how practical and how it can work. If they have network, put up a system, how are they going to have to such a system? Reviews are being done to make the system better so that we reduce on wastage. Thank you so much, uh, Honorable. Um, uh, uh, Baka yeah. Sonso, welcome. Good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Good evening. How are you? Good. How's everyone I'm doing? Fine. Today? I'm Good evening, fine. Good evening, <laughs> yes, uh, How is the Honorable, M Honorable MP Maveta today? I'm right. Thank you. Good to have you back again after a long time. <laughs> yeah. Good to see you. <laughs> yeah. Good to see you too. I'm going to have a premium meeting with my phone. So, so can you kindly just uh, probably you have a comment or a question as I look for some of the viewers' comments. Uh, just two minutes, please, uh, before I hand okay, over to you, Barbara. Uh, Honorable Mabeta, thank you. Um, I have a question for you and a suggestion. Uh, it's a question in form yeah, of actually. a suggestion. We, oh, yeah. as the people supporting the party, uh, government. President Why didn't you, the parliamentarians, just go to parliament to create a law? Iaba identikone ya America. every constitutional office pair who was appointed by the last president should immediately tender the resignation letter to the current president so that his job will not be to sack them, but to decide if he should keep them. That's one. Uh, that's one part of the question. The other okay. part of the question, there is a conversation that is going on around um, uh, the fact that the appointment of the chief justice should be subjected to public hearings. I think that what I'm asking about can also be a part of that law, that these public office bearers, uh, the president has a right to create uh, a management team that is going to help him, uh, but it's you, the parliamentarians, who should help him. Why can't you go to parliament to pro put up such proposals uh, so that even people who are taking on public offices, not just the chief justice, are subjected to public hearings. So there is transparency, and uh, we are sure that every controlling officer is a competent guy based on how he defended his private and public record and also how he executed his jobs in his past experience. I know your, your fascination with constructions and all of that. Yeah, that's part of what you have to lobby for the people, but we are looking at the big picture of being a lawmaker. Why not make laws that can help the president, you know, seat his government, you know, remove all the people from the, uh, the PF appointed boards, just simply with one piece of legislation that says everyone who was appointed should tender in the resignation and you put it retroactive to the date when the president started. So then you can just flip in the pages and then the new ones may be subjected to a public hearing 
as uh, other people are suggesting. So, uh, I, I, and lastly, are you having any other initiatives or pieces of legislation that you are pushing in parliament? As okay. MP? Yeah, thank you. I think I get you. That is, uh, I get your understanding. Yeah, uh, the law to force people to, to resign on their own. Uh, you know, um, some laws are constitutional laws. You need to have a two-third majority to change it, of which at the moment UPND only have uh, 82 members of parliament. And uh, for us to have the two-third, you need to go to 209. So even if we are to introduce this law, it has to be supported by the other independent and PF members to, to, to change such a law. Some laws are constitutional. Even in a situation where the law is a change, it cannot be applied backwards. The law does not apply backwards, no, cannot say reverse it. So I think these are some of the things we need to sit down as Zambians and look at maybe we need to review the whole constitution, you know. When they they they, they, they the chance of reviewing the constitution, these are things we need we need to look at. How do you force someone to resign? Um forcing someone to resign. Resignation is a personal thing, can't force someone to resign. So maybe we need to make those jobs just to, to to be contract jobs which should move with the term of the president so that after five years they drop off so that uh, after elections you can have a new one but at the moment there are jobs which are pensionable meaning you can't terminate them without incurring the cost of compensation to compensate the people you pay them the current salaries then the number of months remaining up to the time they'll be 65 years that, that's a cost implication in some of the decisions we have to take. If someone is 45 years, you multiply the number of 45 to 65 is 20 years times the number of months times the current salary plus their pension. Do we have such money to compensate people? <coughs> that's the cost implication of what, what a, such a decision would, would, would incur to the Zambian people. So the certain things which are so difficult because of the cost implications associated to their roles we, in, in which according to the constitution and the labor laws you know we are, we are we have, uh, subscribed to international labor laws so we follow the labor laws or if the government will set the standards what would be the effects on the private sector if the government is the first one to break the laws internally what confidence are we giving to the investors if we are going to promote lawlessness it's a rule of law so when the law applies you have to be followed that's why I've seen some other people that are being promoted, but they keep being put in offices where they are less active. It's a promotion because that's the requirement. So for you to move from this position, you can only move by being promoted. The promotion, but let's look at the influence in that office. So there's a lot which you have to look at. If you're not on the contract, you, for those on contract, you have to wait for the contract to end so that they're phased out. But some decision will be made where it to cost money. Uh, well, we also have to uh, bear in mind to say with the, this government is trying to raise money to push towards the much urgent needs. So is it what's doing it? Should you lose money by firing people to, to, to just get rid of them out of the system or buy drugs in hospitals? Should you just fire people to meet the demand of the, the, the food soldiers because they don't like someone or save that money to continue to provide education? So there's a lot, there's a lot of, remember the president spoke about, we shall make a decision based on cost benefit analysis. What's the cost and what will be the benefit? Can I the just say, uh, is that okay? Yeah. Sure, Barbara. So uh, I'll, just, uh, I'll just ask this, that it's based on, uh, I'm, I'm in a lot of WhatsApp groups. Somebody actually asked this question and said that uh, if, you delay in sucking people. You're not just sucking everybody. You're sucking the ones that are affecting the work of UPND and putting things in place. So mm -hmm. somebody said, so you're saying that um, you, don't just, you just don't want to suck people anyhow. So you have to find a balance between mm -hmm. you being looked as people doing their job or just forgiving people for the sake of forgiving because somebody has said at the rate things are going, the people around uh, our president may look like the players of uh, 
Argentina, where they've got one Messi, absolutely fantastic, trying to win a game when everybody else is not playing. Now, the other people that are not playing, it's not because they're not playing in this instance, it's because you've got other people that are frustrating you from another party that are not with your vision. So, for example, in the news, if it's a government news, surely the information that should be coming on should be the good things that you're doing. You've done so many things. You're doing so many things that have come in. The, uh, you know, you've been to Senegal. You've been, and that goes for a lot of uh, MPs and ministers. But there's a bit of, you listen to the news, the first thing that comes up is the negative news, which is counter-interactive, uh, counter, you know, what you're doing. So something somewhere is missing. Even in the, the people that we get the democracy from, in the UK, in America, there are pro-stations, uh, there are stations that are pro-government who first talk about the best things that the government is doing, because that also gives confidence to the people that voted you. But in this instance, the people that are, fr everybody knows, the people that are frustrating this thing, but then there's a question of, should we sack them? Should we sack them? Should it take a little bit? Should we follow a process? But then, whilst following a process, things are going wrong. So is there a certain balance, a, a balance to how, far left or right you can go so that you meet everyone in the middle I don't know if I'm making myself clear is there a midpoint where you know you can't sack people anyhow but those that are not doing their job they should go it's not a yeah 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 yeah, yeah. The talk, I think it's not an issue of what we need to do what we don't need. it's what the law says if you are going to sack me I'm a pensionable employee you have to compensate me for the rest of the months I should have been employment. I want to get to that point on the compensation point. If you're not going to compensate me, you have to continue paying my salary until the day you're going to compensate me. So you're going to have two people being paid for one job. Do you have that capacity at some at the moment? You know, do you have the capacity to continue paying two salaries, senior government employees with their salaries benefit for or mean two people on one job. So there's a cost implication to that decision. So before we make the final decision, we have to look at the costs involved. Moral, morality usually does not come first when it comes to cost. Morally, there are people who are working hard to frustrate the European government. But on the cost components, as we go to negotiate to, to the, 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 the donors, IMF, and we're going to tell them, say, I've got a thousand of people on our wage bill who are not on our wage bill because they were PF. Someone will say, you're not making prudent decisions. The decisions you made are not supporting the need for you to be helped or to be bailed out on the huge, this huge debt, which is consuming the 50% um, of your, uh, the income you've generated. Even the... the, 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 the the, 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 the people we owe the money. They will say you have the capacity to pay the debt because we made an irrational decision. So there's a lot involved. It's not easy. There's a lot involved. You have the capacity or you don't. It's, uh, it's, it's, can I just say uh, one uh, thing? Since, no, uh, yes, you uh, have uh, you can jump in. Yeah, yeah. Um, at the moment we are, we, we, we are looking at the time, we are running out of time and my colleagues have uh, asked questions. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll let the other people uh, also ask questions. Since uh, we've been dominated by ladies, we'll start with the gentleman for the time being. And um, knowing the gentleman you are here, I have to choose carefully. So I'll start with wise man, because if I start with my, my two brothers, oh my God, we'll all sleep right here. So we'll start with wise man. Wise man, uh, at least two minutes. And the, 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 our honorable can have at least three minutes of answering so that we go to Brian in hand and then so on and so forth. So up, it's, it's, your floor is yours, wise man. Uh, sorry, Percy. Can I just say that uh, there's, uh, some, there's a question from our viewers uh, so that we can also interact with our viewers before we come back to the panelists. Uh, it's just a very quick question. 
this is uh, uh, Ndavazil, Ndavazil, Ndavazite, Zuelitin. He says uh, that is specifically for, for Honorable. He's asking, why is the president keeping Kingsley Chanda? Okay, who is Kingsley Chanda? It, that question is specifically oh, for you. Commissioner, yes. Commissioner for ZRA. ZRA Commissioner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Kingsley Chanda is on a contract, which is a valid contract, it was renewed. Before it was renewed, I'm told it was renewed a few weeks before we went into the election. So it's a valid contract. So it's a contract. Is is an employee of the government who was employed by the government. So it's you an employee until um, until we with him it's not fit for him to work. Well, as it is now, it's not illegal there. It's an employee who had his contract just renewed. Thank you, Honorable. I, I, I bet the viewer is listening. And uh, over to you, Percy. Sorry. Uh, wise man, uh, your flo the floor is yours. Uh, you've got two minutes, and we give the, the, the Honorable three minutes to answer quick so that we can all of, all, all of you can ask questions before it's uh, uh, half, uh, before we, because we are remaining with 21 minutes now. Over to you, wise man. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Comrade Percy. Thank you very much uh, for TV Wakwe to uh, participant and uh, thank you very much for the for our viewers. Uh, Honorable, good evening, sir. Uh, good evening, uh, um, wise man. Wise man, oh yeah, sure, oh, yeah. Sorry, sorry, you, yeah. No problem, we are one. Uh, yeah, sure. Honorable, I have uh, three questions. I'll be quick as my uh, Madam Speaker and uh, Mr. Speaker have uh, guided me. Uh, to handle my two minutes, I think I'll start with uh, uh, when when UPND we were campaigning. I'm one of the foot soldiers of UPND here in Kavu, based in Kavu, yeah. Central Province. When we were campaigning, you, our leaders, you were in the forefront, telling us about uh, the corruption which you saw in PF. Suddenly, okay. after we win the election, you, our leaders, you have kept quiet, and now they are independent member of parliament, such as Miu Nazuru. And the list who are mentioning them, does it mean now power as a uh, as overshadowed your your highest? You can't see the same corruption you are telling us, or there is something you are scared of now pointing the fingers for the people you are telling us. You want to see uh, conviction about uh, what you were telling us, so that we believe that when our leaders tell us something, they see something, but not speculations. How far okay. are you from such issues? Number two. Uh -huh. uh, my Madam Speaker asked you a very important question about CDF. Mm -hmm. She asked okay. you to say, what are your plans about CDF? And you said the first thing you're going to, we are going to appoint the committee. Are you telling me that you are going to wait for CDF to come for you to appoint a, a committee? Or you already have the committee in plan and just waiting for the CDF to come? As far as I'm concerned, CDF has already been given. And I'm told it was 1.6 uh, per constituency. And uh, yeah. I want to understand uh, how, what are your plans, how you are going to use uh, the CDF. And lastly, what, are, what other means do you have to, for the empowerment for the youth of Kankoyo and the youth of this country, not especially those people who fought apart from giving them the Black Mountain? Because not all, all of them who are miners, mind, some of them, they only have skills such as carpentry, welding, and and, uh, the, and the list. What are your plans for such kind of people, including disabled and uh, uh, women who have got no capacity to go in those black mountains? Thank you very much. Thank you. OK. Uh, corruption pronouncements and uh, um, in the, the independent are now pointing out who's corrupt, who's not corrupt. I think we, when I when I just started, I said we are responsible. We are not going to to judge people. I mean, to judge individuals in the media. We still respect the the their liberties. When we're in the opposition, we are providing checks and balances. Now, whatever we say, people will get it as a gospel truth. If I wake up today and say that the MD in this company is corrupt. People take it away judging because they feel I've got background information. 
So we're not going to judge people or we're not going to influence public opinion to damage people's reputation or people's, uh, to influence people's perceptions so the public can rise against them. When governments have got the law enforcement agencies, who are supposed to do their job? Their job is to investigate and bring out the facts. We are no, no longer investigators or pointers to say there is on corruption here. No. We are in government. All we have to do is to ensure that we protect even the accused because they still have the rights to be protected by the government. We are innocent until proven guilty. So we are not going to be the ones pointing at human beings and like we are influencing even the court to, to, to prove our point that this person is corrupt. So the, the, the corruption which we said, I've just said here today, we are going to write to institutions, follow the law. You write to them, they give you the information, then we report to the public based on their findings. Then the public tell us what to do. So what you don't want is to speculate, to judge people in the media. We end up destroying their, 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 their life because we, 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 we pronounce kind of statements. So we are not going to judge people through the media or we are not going to write on destroying our citizens based on what we think about them. We need the facts before we can pronounce anything. CDF and the CDF committee appointments. The CDF committee has said, we, we have the names, everything is in place. All we need is just to make it official on Friday, according to the, 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 the act which we have to follow. So the CDF committee is already here. On Friday, we're making it official. But before that, we cannot make any decision because we're still illegal until the town clerk approves whatever we're going to do. When it comes to me, me saying the projects I'm going to do as an individual, this is the committee. I'm not bigger than the committee, and I'll never be. We have to engage and involve the committee so that they also have an input. We shall not drag. We shall not, I shall not start making decisions alone. That will be the beginning of the downfall. The committee should be involved. Projects, no matter how urgent they are, at the, in my manifesto, I've got a lot of things which I listed, but I'm not going to put this committee to accept that my my thoughts are the best for everyone. We'll put them. Time will debate. I'll present my, 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 my thoughts and we'll debate with them. If they feel those, my, my, my plans are not in line with what the community needs, we have to respect them. At the end of the day, is perspective and involvement. We, how we start is how we're going to end. So if we're going to start by dragging people to support my idea, instead of engaging them so that the few and the of the, the decision we're making, we are going to make a very big mistake. It's all about perspective and involvement. Empowerment of the youth nationwide. I think this is a big uh, question, maybe which we should tackle next time. Let's just look at the empowerment code. Empowerment also has got two forms. There's an artificial empowerment, which uh, when the PF are trying to use to corrupt uh, or to win votes, which I, I still feel it's, uh, it's, um, it's corruption and certain empowerment. And have to look at the real empowerment, which can work. So it's a, it's a big, it's a big, it's a big topic which we need to handle very well because even our friends in the PF they want to use that part to put pressure on the government to do things fast, but they can backfire. So empowerment is a big topic which we need to separate from the real empowerment and inducing people to vote for you by giving them access to quick money without following procedures. No, uh, that, that, that that will agree with you, uh, mm. um, 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 uh, Honorable MP. Um, the thing is, I'm, I'm sorry I've cut you, but before I, I continue, um, my colleague Gladys, do you have anything from our viewers? If, yes, if, if, I, I okay, have um, one. I, yeah, give the question, one question to, 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 to the uh, Honorable. I hope this time, please, let's be quick, and then we will let our beauty come on. When Let's try to be quick so that I can let you... Uh, and Brian to, to have a chat. So over to you, Gladys. Uh, yes, I have, uh, I have a, a question from uh, Chan Dabaka uh, that are all contract, uh, contract jobs pensionable or super deduction or salary contribution, is it taken? What's the question again? Um, that are all co contract uh, jobs pensionable, or are the salary contributors uh, uh, contribution taken? No contract job. I think they have got what we call gratuity. There's a gratuity paid at the end of every contract. 
So when you're asking about deduction, what, is, what are they saying? I don't understand. You know, there's, there's an upside part. There's an upside Best part. I, I think uh, when they say the contracts, because uh, I'm just now talking from the Minister of uh, uh, Mines, when he said about uh, some of the contracts will be more or less cancelled or they will have to reach an agreement because uh, they are not conducive for those type of companies to be owning that. Basically, that's what I would, I would answer as the same as uh, 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 the Minister of uh, Mines. Uh, uh, beauty. Yeah, I'm quiet. Chunglo uh, my sister, the floor is yours. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, Chunglo Pemkwai, everybody. Hudson, uh, Hudson, uh, <laughs> just heart and son. Yes, yes, yes sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, lovely, lovely to, to see you again. It's great mm -hmm. to you have somebody who's like you, who's you know always coming to us and feeding us with the right information. We like that. Um, yeah. uh, one question. I think Gladys did ask this question, and I'm just going to reiterate uh, the same. Um, how are we going to be to have faith in you, new MPs? How 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 is it possible for you? Let, let me just put it in, in this way: We've seen a lot of theft in the last people. Is it possible for you guys to promise us that you're not going to steal for the people of Zambia? The president has already said that you are a servant of the people of Zambia. How are we going to know that you're not going to be filling up your pockets and enriching your relatives when you're in power? One, that's one of them. Number two, I want to talk about something I forgot. Yeah. Hmm. Hold on, hold on now. The second one was... The second one. Do you think the police are doing their job? Because since the police, the new police uh, team was put in, to be honest with you, I, for one, I must say I'm quite disappointed. And the reason why I'm disappointed is because, and probably, you probably not be able to answer this one, but, you know, I'm going to put it there. We have a lady who clearly used to shower, pretty much shower in South HH. Mm -hmm. And her name is, what's her name? She was a spokesperson. What's her name? Katongo. Is it Mata Katongo? Whatever her name is. Yeah, now, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's been changed from being a national spokesperson to acting commissioner of police. In short, can she talk like that? Is that what's going to be happening? I'm just surprised, but I'll leave it to you. If you can answer those questions for me, I'll be very happy. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, I think the first question was about how are you going to trust us that we're not going to steal from the Zambian people? I always believe to say in Bemba we say inside the you know, the head of state has got so much influence on how we, the followers, are going to behave. I strongly believe the president has been straight and the threat about this has even given us a warning to say if you think you can't manage, contain the temptation, don't even come close to the powers being. That was the friendly warning, but the serious one. So if you you see, I think the public, this is where we need also to come up on board and hold us accountable. I am I'm involved in the donation of funds you think are not within my means, within my, my, my income. You invite me to a wedding, I donate 200,000, I donate 100,000. The other day I'm in this church, I donate a, a vehicle, a Benz, let's say 10,000, and you clap for me. What are you doing? You're proving my corruption. So I need to check our lifestyle. You know, you need to check to say, how are you managing? It's your right to question. If I don't give you a response, you report me to these institutions so that they can put me under check. But it's ask the public who, who end up verifying politicians. You know, when they do something, especially when it comes to money, it's benefiting us. As long as that money is benefiting us, that's what I want. I don't want to talk about the empowerment part. If I'm going to give you 100 million of beautiful empowerment, you want to question me where that money is coming from. Because I've benefited. That's also contributing to corruption as the public. So if I start spending more than uh, you more than I earn, that should ring a bell to say there's a corrupt uh, suspected corrupt practice. This member of parliament being corrupt and have the right to question. Thank you so much, my honorable. 
Yeah. Yeah. So the police doing their job, but don't they understand whether well, the police are not arresting criminals, or maybe if the, you didn't understand who, what type of job the police maybe they're not doing. I think a lot of it just don't get me started. I think I'll leave it there. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> thank you beauty thank you beauty i think we go uh, we are running out of time we have five minutes and i'll kindly give uh, uh brian impande to ask uh, one question please uh, before we let uh, mukelava to summarize uh, before we we end the program over to you uh, uh, brian uh thank you very much uh, a very insightful uh, program it has been uh, good to see you professor Good to see you, Honorable, and good to see all the panelists. Uh, to start with, uh, yeah. I know uh, I'm not really, I know he's trying to be truthful, but I'm, I'm not happy with the way our Honorable is answering. Uh, so my question is this, maybe before I ask it, let me just give, give a background. We understand that the PF government under their manifesto, it was clearly stated to say, for you to get an appointment into government, you should have been an uncompromising member of the party. So that means that most of these, you know, positions that are being held in government and other parastatals are held by people that were party members. So if you're not a party member, you will not get the job because you are qualified. The qualification first was you have to be a party member and compromising party member who is not. So with that background, it is therefore very evident to say uh, most of these government institutions and parastatal and quasi-government institutions has got cadres running them. And so if that is the case, all the people that are under them, that they are recruiting and doing all that, are people that are related to them. So even if there's this change of government, it means these people, and you're saying they cannot be fired because of the contracts and stuff like that, because of failing, fearing to pay them and stuff like that. So if that's the case, that it means that these people are still continuing to rule us and to enter there. So is there not is there a law that you know we can we can use I mean, to relieve these people because they entered the job on patronage for being because they are members of the party only through that. Is there a law that can be used for these people to be you know relieved of their duties? Yeah, I mean, these people are employed and they've got valid contracts, which you can't prove on their membership to say they are employed because of them being PF cadres. If they qualify, they've got the qualifications and they're performing. They, they, I mean, it's within their contracts. If they're meeting the condition of the contracts, which they, they are executing at the moment, the perception about them being PF and what cannot override what is there. Contract, the contract is a binding document, it's a legal document. It's law. Under law, it's a legal document. If you break the contract, you have to compensate me. You know, you have to compensate me. So regardless of how they were employed, but where the contract is valid, are they performing according to the contracts and are they meeting the obligation? If you are going to take a route of getting rid of anyone because they are PF and break the contract, there's a consequence on that. A financial consequence is going to even make our financial situation as a country go deep waters because we don't have the money to pay them. In other countries, they have enough money. They can terminate your contract. They pay you. They forget about you. But you still have a lot of unpaid retirees, you know? The retirees so, have been working every day. So it means... One thing to sorry, be sorry, so, sorry, Honorable. So it means yeah. there was no need of changing government because the same people running the show. Is that the case? No, 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 no. The, 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 the change of government was to change the way things are done. And we're going to do the right thing because two wrongs don't make it right. Two wrongs don't make it right. But, but Honorable, I think that uh, if probably you have the time, we're going to continue to 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 discuss on that topic. Uh, Vampande, please kindly stay tuned. I would like Vam to 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 conclude on this program before we end. Uh, I'm sorry to cut you off, but we have to we we have to cut you there, and uh, so that uh, we can give just to Bam Kelevai. We're gonna continue. Please take over, Bam Kelevai. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Bo, Bo Honorable, and thank you good so evening, much, panelists. 
Yeah, I've been I've been wait I've been waiting for my turn. Uh, you have raised so many issues that are questionable, and yeah. uh, I'll just uh, uh, I'll just go to the point. The issue the when they, you're talking of contracts, a contract can be terminated at any given time, no matter what period you may have agreed on, and uh, the prerogative is on the of the, the, the on both parts. When it's you, the employee, the, the person that is employee, and you are not satisfied and you feel like you want to leave, you can just terminate the contract at any time. You don't have to wait. Um, and it's called resignation. And with yeah. you, the employer, you as an employer, and if you see that uh, the person you've offered a contract to is not meeting your standards and the requirements, and you can also, you don't even have to give a reason why you are terminating the three-year or four-year contract. You can simply cut it immediately and give that person a reasonable notice, and that's it. That person goes, you know, and, and, and unless the person, yes, you read your labor laws, and these are the laws that you need to read. The problem to have, we leave things to other people. Go and read the law and find out any reason that you give in a termination of contract. You don't have to it will determine the kind of termination it is. You know, if it's a dismissal, a reason that you're going to give in it in the termination will 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 if it if it dwells on dis, uh, disciplinary measure, it's a dismissal. And in a yeah. dismissal, you are not going to be awarded with those uh, repatriation you are talking about to those retrenchment whatever you know in a retrenchment it's another issue just i don't want to go straight into those we can discuss that's another topic for another day i'm happy that you raised those issues but read your laws and please uh, enact good laws um I, I know we have good labor laws in zambia and we can we can we can simply fine tune them we cannot uh, be under the pretext that the, 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 the person that is given a contract by the previous uh, regime, even when they were corrupt, but because the contract is valid for three years, more years, we cannot maintain such a person. It's easy to terminate that contract. So that is my position on that part. And on the issue of gambling, Let's put mind onto things that are very, very serious, that are troubling the Zambian people right now. Gambling is an issue that is, we, we don't even need to talk about. If you have Kuma Las Vegas, not if you Zambia, Mulete gambling, Wambo, Klanda, Pari gambling, when we have chaps that, has, that have so much money in their homes that are accounted for, the money that is, uh, that they have, they have stolen, they have purchased so many things. So in open day four, I have learned a proposal is telling me to concentrate on my issues I let that build our country. Let's talk about employment. Let's talk about youth empowerment, women rights, empower women, empower the youths. These are issues, these are pressing issues, not if you're for Kulanda, if you're gay, if you're a gambling. Uh uh can do it as we go on. It's too early for us to start talking about you have the right to repeal these laws. You are the as legislatures. You can repeal the laws. Thank you, Thank you so much, Bam Kelebai. I have to end you because we have that, to end the program. I, Thank is you. it okay? Is it okay? We can continue from the background or we can Let's bring uh, the ba, 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 Honorable okay. always come on ma on Mondays. It's unfortunately our, the Facebook and uh, was down. So he's coming again next week on Monday and uh, you can bring, you can table your question. So please, uh, we are ending the program. Thank you very much viewers and thank well, you so much. Maybe, maybe just a minute. I think uh, on the contract part, I need to be very clear so that you don't mislead the people. Okay, There's, sure, the, sure. In every contract, the, the clause which says the, the, the two, mm, any of the parties shall not do anything outside this contract without prior arrangement or agreement between the two parties. No, I cannot no, just wake no. up to them because I don't like my maid, you know, because I don't like the maid and say you're fired. Where, where, where does the breach of contract come in in such a situation? No, no, no. no. You know? Um, we can discuss this later. The contract has got a breach. 
which you I know, know. Yeah, yeah, a breach like comes in when you have violated the contract, but yes. you, can, you have the right to so, terminate the contract. Gentlemen, perhaps we will we'll, we'll further we have to discuss and we'll bring in the lawyer and then we can discuss <laughs> the contract clause and no what way. it entails. So, my God, it's go on and yeah. uh, finish off yeah, the show. Then, 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 then firing people based on assumption. If someone is corrupt, <laughs> You need to prove that they are corrupt and they'll be fired when proven no, that they are not getting fired. Yes. On assumptions. True. You are right. Can, can right. I? Can, yeah. can, can, can we? Can we, can we go to the background, please? Can we end this? We are ending this program and we but, can continue. But, but, Honorable Bam Bam Kelavai, can you kindly? Uh, can we end the program, please? Uh, viewers, thank you very much for 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 having you here, all the panelists. We can continue next week. We are having uh, Honorable Maveta. So please table your questions and write them down so that you can bring them on the table for next week. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you, Vachu Wempala. Thank you, everybody. You good night. Good night. Good Sorry night. about the misdeeds on the, on the show, but good night. Thank good you. Night. Thank you. Okay.